You've been watching some of the SpaceX stuff recently, haven't you? I have, actually, yes. Well, I'm sure many of you Podstrons will have been following the various SpaceX launches that have been happening uh, in Texas over the past few years. Rather cool. Mm -hmm. And rather Anderson-esque, I'd say. Um, Yeah. The team have been experimenting with vertical takeoff and landing, as well as reusable, as opposed to disposable, hardware. Uh, Think Thunderbird 3 more than Zero X. In fact, if you're a fan, it's hard not to think of Jerry Anderson vehicles while watching the various takeoffs, landings, and, of course, the occasional Meddings-esque explosions. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. You don't have to look very hard (laughs) at the SpaceX heavy lift, fully reusable two-stage launch vehicle Starship to see a certain resemblance to Fireball XL5. True, yes. And, of course, we often hear that Elon Musk is a Space 1999 fan as well. He's tweeted quite a few Space 1999 things and clips over the years. Mm, yeah. But there's an even more direct link between the worlds of Anderson and the world of real-life rocketry than that. Is there now? Yeah. Now, Richard, what do you think of when I say Hotol? What? what when you say it like that? <sighs> hotol. <laughs> well, I'd forgotten how to say it. Hot- right. Hotol, yeah. Well, that's uh, horizontal... Take off and landing, isn't it? I think. That is exactly right. You're on the yeah. right track. Yeah. The hotel project, I find it hard not to say hotel, yeah, the I, I hotel project yeah. uh, was a joint effort by Rolls Royce and British Aerospace to produce a spacecraft that could be reusable and more efficient than the then state of the art American space shuttle. Mm-hmm. The project started in 1982 when Elon Musk was about 11. All right, okay. So just so you know. Uh, oh, in, fine. So, yeah. In addition to some pretty sophisticated new ideas about using air in the atmosphere as a fuel on ascent, Mm. HOTOL took off and landed more like a conventional aircraft than rocket, as its name suggests. Yes. Fully fuelled, the vehicle was too heavy for its own undercarriage. Mm. I know that feeling. Uh, (laughs) the, uh, The engineers solved this problem by using a detachable trolley which would support the winged rocket as it hurtled along the runway. At the moment of liftoff, this trolley would be dropped and Hotel would soar into the stars with a payload of satellites aboard. Hang on. What? Does that trolley sound familiar to you? Is yeah, that what you're... Just a bit, yeah. Of course, it's con- conceptually the same as the launch from Fireball XL5, which first aired 20 years before the Hotel project began. Yes. Unfortunately, the project never moved past the design stage due to lack of funding and a few design imperfections, although it remains a highly influential design. There are even those who believe that some of the design principles could be very, very useful in modern rocketry. Interestingly, Dad remembered meeting one Alan Bond. Bond. Oh, Alan Bond. Yes. An mm-hmm. aerospace engineer on the Hotel project and a founder of Reaction Engines who told him that he had fond memories of watching Fireball XL5 as a boy. Ah. So there you go, Richard yes. and Podsterons. Another case of a Jerry Anderson series influencing real-life technology. There. Like it. Mm. That's great. Also, I think we should have more fab facts where you have to say the word hotel. Hotel is Hotel. very hard for me to say, so I'd <laughs> rather we had no more about it. But that is rather cool, isn't it? Now, you look at... Um, those SpaceX rockets that do look almost exactly like Fireball XL5. You know, is that influenced, do you think? Do we know? Can we find well, out? Does somebody, yeah. does, does a yeah. poster on listening right now know yeah. somebody at SpaceX? Can, can they ask? Because it, it feels too similar to be pure chance. Yeah, you're right. Also, on, a, on another note. Another uh, note? Well, we do know, don't we, that, that Jerry was often quite dismissive of uh, his uh, Supermarination and his puppet series and so yeah. on. So, uh, I should imagine when you meet someone like Alan Bond, an aerospace engineer, who says that, you know, basically he was inspired, had fond memories of watching Fireball XL5 as a boy, that must have struck a chord with your dad somehow, surely. Oh, I'm sure. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was meetings like that that gradually made him a bit more happy yeah. about yeah, his, exactly. his puppet contribution and the science fiction side. Although I guess he, he would have just said, well, you know, it all came from a fascination with aviation and rocketry anyway, so it's only natural mm. that it's going to sort of feed back in. Mm. So there we go. Mm. Yeah, Lovely. Interesting. Yeah, like it. Very nice. There you go. So if you're happy to continue, I think that brings us rather reusably to the end of this week's <sighs> Total, Total Fact. fact. 